there to install the pistons and uh, there's a few goodies here I want to make you familiar with. First of all is the rod bolt protector which is just a little plastic sleeve that you install right over the rod bolt. You can see I've got one on here already and what that does is it protects the crankshaft from getting scratched while you're installing the rod into the piston hole. It'll actually guide it right up over the crankshaft without scratching it. It actually helps align it up if you're really careful and you eyeball it in there pretty straight. It'll guide it right in. So anyway, make sure you pick up a pair of these at your machine shop when you buy all your parts. They usually will give them to you free. Or you can just use a piece of rubber fuel tubing will work on there too. I've done that before. Then we have our piston ring compressor. This is a pretty good one which is a set of different size piston ring clamps that you actually put on the same pliers tool and it has a lock position so you just cinch it down tight and it'll hold it on. Uh, we've got our connecting rod cap which I've gone ahead and wiped clean with a dry lint free cloth. Same thing here before I installed the bearing. We have all our rod bearings here and if you can see none of these have an oil hole so you can't really mix any of these up. They'll go on the top or the bottom unlike the cylinder block bearings do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, lube these things up, put them in the compressor and I'll show you how to pop them in the cylinder block. Now that we're ready to install these pistons, let me show you what I've done here. I've taken the original crankshaft bolt, I spaced it out with an oversized nut. It actually isn't even threaded on there, it's so big. Just for a spacer, use the existing washer and screwed it right into the crankshaft and I'm going to use that to crank this engine over while I'm working on it, while I'm installing the pistons. And actually, just to show you what a good fit we have here, this is what I call the one finger rule. If I can crank this engine over with one finger, see that? Then that's a good fitting crankshaft. That thing's going to last forever as long as we keep oil going to it. So anyways, that's how I tool up the front of this crankshaft so we can work on it. Just go ahead and use the existing crankshaft bolt. And the reason I space that is because if you bottom this bolt out, you can end up damaging the thread. So I keep it spaced out a little bit. That way it's on a good clean thread. It goes in about that far. So that'll be fine, just like that. Alright, now we're going to install our pistons. Uh, first thing you need to know is go ahead and crank your crankshaft so the number one journal is facing upward. Got it facing upward here. And actually we want it to, since this is your number one cylinder, which is the most forward cylinder on the whole engine, um, usually the passenger side on the GM. We're going to go ahead and kind of look straight down the cylinder bore hole from this direction and put our crankshaft aiming straight down towards the center of the rod. That way when we put the piston in, it'll go straight on like that. Okay. Now on your uh, rebuild kit pistons, usually they're always going to have a little dot or a mark etched in the side of the piston on the top which will indicate the front of the piston which will lead towards the front of the engine. These particular pistons are racing pistons and they don't have the mark marked on them but I know how to put these in so we're going to be fine. Uh, but remember when you put in your engine together wherever the dot or the mark in the center of the piston is that's going to be facing towards the front of the engine when you're installing it which will be frontwards that way. All right, so what we're going to do first here is we're going to take our assembly lube. And I just like to squirt a little bit in the cylinder wall. You go right around the whole thing, wet it. Like I said, you don't have to goop it all up. Just a little bit of work on there, a couple thousandths worth. And I like to just put some on the piston. Work it in with my hand. Just a light coating. Some people actually dunk these in oil, which I really don't recommend. It's a real big mess and it's not really necessary. As long as you get this piston wet, it's going to be fine. Just make sure you touch all the aluminum on here. Okay? Double check your piston ring gaps. Make sure they're 180 off. You got the top one here, center one here. Okay? Next, we're going to take our piston ring compressor tool and install that on the piston. Now uh, we're going to install the piston in this way, being this the front of the piston here. So 
So I'm going to stall my tool facing upward in a convenient area where I can hold onto the tool. Clamp it on there good and tight. Don't want it to slip out. I'm going to go ahead and start it in the cylinder here. Remember, you never want to force anything when you're doing this. Everything should fit nicely. Look up here, check your rod, make sure it's going to go past your crankshaft. Now I'm going to take a rubber handled mallet to tap this in. And again, if it seems like the piston stops, or if it's jamming up trying to put it in, just stop right there and take it back out and inspect everything because you don't want to damage your piston or your piston rings while you're doing this. So just tap it in nice and slowly, little taps at a time. Went right in, no problem. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hold on to this rod end up here and just slowly guide it up while it goes around this crankshaft journal. In fact, I'll move it over here so we can see a better view. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to guide this with my fingers looking straight down it. There, that's the view we want right there. See, we're looking straight down the crankshaft. As you can see, it's a little bit cockeyed. So what I'm going to have to do is hold on to it. You don't have to muscle it. Just barely turn it with your fingers as you're tapping and it'll move. Try to get it on there as straight as you possibly can. So we're going to go ahead and continue to tap it on here. And all the while guiding it so it doesn't bind up on anything. And there we go. Attach the crankshaft. And remember, put a good amount of assembly lube on that bearing and the crankshaft before you put this together. It's really important. Next we're going to take our rod cap. And remember, as you can see, see the little keeper lock tab there and the same here? All we're going to do is put these on the same side, which is upward on this one. Flip it over like that. That way they will lock against each other and they won't spin the bearing that way. So we're going to go ahead and put some assembly lube on here. Put the bearing cap on. And another dead giveaway is, see the little corner tabs on the bearing cap? They usually would stick out, which are used to splash oil around, um, on the both of your outer sides of your rod bearing. So you're going to have a, a squared off tab facing that way on this rod, and you're also going to have a squared out tab facing that outward. They're never going to be touching or having a squared out part in the middle there. So that's just another way I remember to check like that. But the most important thing is a little tab right there. Line up your tabs. So we'll get this bearing set on here. Next we're going to put a little dab of Loctite thread sealer on each one of these. Tighten down the rod caps just enough so they're snug. Now it's always a good idea to put a little Loctite on these bolts. Just a little drop will do. And what that's going to do is prevent our rod bolts from vibrating loose and causing our engine to self-destruct. I'm not looking forward to anything like that. So anyways, we got these all with some Loctite on them. Just going to torque them down with, by hand. I'm not going to get them all the way tight yet, just so they bottom out. And try to do it equally. You want these to go on good and straight. 